Hello again, it's Sharon from Mad Paper Crush. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to the last week of 2020. I hope that you are having um, a wonderful holiday. I hope that you had a great Christmas. And I wanted to do my second assemblage for another five um, projects that I did this year that I had so much fun and wanted to kind of share with you again. I also thought this would be a great time if you had some time at home and wanted to do some crafting, this would be, these projects would be a great idea for you to dive in and, and have some fun doing some crafting with paper. So let, I hope that you'll join me for this video as we go through um, another five projects for 2020. Okay, the first project that I wanted to show you is this one, which is my, I'm calling it my lay flat ephemera holder. So um, I'm always, I have a lot of little pieces of ephemera and I have this ephemera holder here that I, you know, keep things in. But when you, you know, start putting a whole bunch of things in here, then you have to kind of, you know, pull everything out and spread them out and then put everything back in the pocket. And um, I was, you know, having things all over the place. I was dropping things, all that good stuff. So I wanted to find another way to be able to sort through my ephemera to be able to use in my journals or while I was collaging and things like that. And so I had an idea for this lay flat ephemera holder or, or ephemera envelope. And I wanted to show you this. So I still use this all the time. I love it. I love it. I love it. I did have to replace this brad that's right here um, because it the one that I had in there before broke. So that's one thing that I've, I've had to do <laughs> since I did this. But like I said, I still, and it broke because of overuse. I mean, I just, I use this thing all the time. So you can see it's just a little fold in envelope, but it kind of holds all my ephemera in here. And I can very easily then go through things. I can take all my little bits of ephemera that I have and very easily go through and, you know, find the pieces that I want to take out and use for a journal or collage that I'm working on. So I do absolutely love this um, lay flat ephemera holder. And if you have a lot of little pieces of ephemera that you find yourself pulling out, trying to find space for flipping through and then trying to put everything back, I would highly recommend um, this project. I think it's been great. Um, the one thing I will say, I, I made another one for the back of this. And let me just put this back together. And when you open up this one, I've, I decided to put like, you know, dictionary things and stuff in this side. And for some reason, this one wants to, um, everything wants to slide out the side. <laughs> so I'm not sure why that keeps happening, if they're just too small or these um, papers are a little light. Um, or maybe I just need to curve these up a little more. Maybe the sides are just pushed down too far and that's why things keep falling out. I don't know. Um, but that's just one thing that I wanted to mention to you. So um, the, my other, the other side of this seems to work just fine. I'm not sure why this side wants to be difficult um, <laughs> sometimes. But I still like having, you know, all those little bits of paper when I, you know, cut out words and different things like that. I like to have them in here. Um, and then, you know, like I said, this side has been really great for keeping my numbers and things in there. So um, let me just, I'm just going to open it one more time so you can kind of see um, how everything is just, you know, I just have it all stacked in there, but um, it's easy for me to just go through and find what I need. Um, if you like these numbers in ephemera, um, I use this kit a lot. This is one of my numbers kits and I will put it down, uh, link it down in the bottom if you're interested in that as well. But this ephemera folder was definitely um, a great project. And like I said, I still use this thing all the time. Next up for my project is my little tag book of lists. Um, as we started going through the pandemic this year, I really thought that I kind of wanted to document um, the things that you know, we were seeing because it was just kind of, I mean, it's, it has been a crazy time. And um, so I just kind of wanted to, to keep some of those memories. And I thought it would be fun to do it in a list. Now I started um, these lists from like a master board. So you can kind of see how they are very similar in terms of the base. 
Um, but they're all different, which I, I completely love, I must say. And um, I think that I need to either get a bigger ring <laughs> or just bind these up with some, you know, uh, twine or something like that because I, I'm ready to add more to these lists. Um, I'm not, I'm certainly not done with them uh, yet. So I um, have some things, let's see, um, like things I want to remember. So I have this little... This is the list of things I want to remember. So we, our church, because we couldn't meet in person, our church started going to a local drive-in and having church there. And that was so much, so much fun. I had a couple of friends whose kids had, um, birthdays and we all did like a little birthday parade since we couldn't do parties and things like that. So there was, there was a lot of different things that I wanted to remember. Another one that I thought was fun was, search history. If you use Google and you have a Google account, Google will save your search history. And so I wanted to go back. I started going back and looking at some of the things I searched for in Google when this whole pandemic thing started. So some of the things were how to make a mask. Uh, there was a story about a woman who was coughing on vegetables in one of the grocery stores, and I must have searched for that. <laughs> Um, I searched for instant pot soup because I was trying to make more things at home. Um, in, uh, incubation for COVID-19 systems. So there was all kinds of things that I had been searching for. And I thought that was, I, I need to do that again. Cause I did that just from, you know, the first couple months, I need to do it again for the next couple months, um, of the year just to see what some of the things are. So favorite dinners I've done things that were always sold out in the beginning. I thought this was absolutely crazy. So toilet paper, I think everybody had that problem, but um, I went looking for like um, a taco kit that had the taco seasoning and the shells in it and they were sold out and they were sold out like every single one was sold out. It was crazy. Canned meat was sold out. I was trying to get elderberry because normally every winter I make an elderberry syrup for us as um, just kind of an immune support and I couldn't find it anywhere because I think that's also an antiviral um, uh, remedy. So <laughs> it was just crazy. So anyway, this was my my um, tag book of lists and I had so much fun making this. So I go through making the master board and everything else in here. Um, and then I also even had a freebie that had some of the labels with the months on them and then some of the um, different lists that I put together. So the um, freebie page has these little list titles. So buzzwords, March, you know, of 20, search history, favorite dinners, things always sold out, the things I did too much, things I'm looking forward to. So there's all kinds of um, little list labels that I had put in that freebie kit. And if you would like the freebie kit, you can go to madpapercrush.com forward slash documenting and you can get the kit. I will link the project and the freebie kit down below as well if you would like to set up your own um, sort of book of lists of 2020 during this crazy pandemic time. All right, next up is a fabric covered Christmas journal made all from envelopes. So these were, they started off like business size envelopes. So the, the ones that are, I think almost nine inches long, um, I did cut them down. And the reason I'm, I'm bringing this one up after Christmas is because if you haven't made yourself a Christmas journal, this one comes together very quickly. And then you can easily have space to tuck different pictures. Um, you can, you know, tuck in note cards, little notes, that things that you want to remember. I've created some ephemera to put in here, um, but this one came together very easily. And if you don't have a Christmas journal yet, it's definitely a fun one to do. Like I said, there's um, lots of, I tried to make lots of room for myself to write and there's just tons of tuck spots and pockets. So if you're sort of a collector of um, memorabilia, tickets, um, um, you know, receipts, pictures, notes, different things like that, this is a perfect journal to do that because there's so many pockets and tuck spots for you to put all sorts of goodies in there. So I will link this project down below. I didn't do this one that long ago, so I will link it if you would like to make one of those Christmas journals. Okay, another project I wanted to show you were these little word tags that I made. Um, I had been featured on 
Dawn from the Book Vandal Shop. She does a feature Friday and she had featured me on her channel and I had um, done this project and she had done a couple and um, sent some of you over and everybody seemed to love these. So I had a great time making them. The thing that I like the most about them is that I could use up so many of my scraps. I mean, these are, you know, these are small. They're, and they can be, you know, as big or as small as you want. But if you have little paper scraps around, this is a wonderful way to start using up some of them. Same with, you know, ribbon, um, scraps of ribbon or scraps of fabric. This is a, a great way to use up some of that. And these are so fun in journals because of the danglings, you know, the danglies. So when you uh, clip them into a journal, even onto the back of a journal. So let's see, I'm just going to grab my planner here. But you could, you know, uh, put them on to a journal so that they hang on the back there. Or you could um, clip them to a clip here. You could actually poke them through the papers of your journal. But there's lots of different ways to use these. And um, the other thing I love about them is that you can use whatever words you want. So if you have words that are special to you or if you want to um, you know, have a word that helps you remember something or that you wanna keep in the front of your mind, these are great little tags to do that as well. Okay. I, I don't know if this was my favorite project. I had a bunch of favorite projects this year, but this one was definitely pretty high on the list for me. This was my junk journal idea book. And I went through a series on how to make a um, idea book out of, you know, a, a book that you had taken the, the signatures out of. So this one is The Best Love Poems of the American People. And I use this book to keep my ideas in. So I had shown you in my other video, like this um, specimen pocket, because I, you know, tried it out and wanted to see how it would work. I first put it in my idea book, and then I can also come back to it later to remember some of the different things that I had done. So like I have a lot of test things in here. So this was like a, a little triple pocket thing that I had made, and I was trying something out. So I put it in my idea book, you know, gives me a place to keep things. Now I had made the signatures in this pretty much like a normal um, junk journal, but you can see I keep all sorts of notes and things in here. So like I have ideas of different things I wanna try that I keep in my little idea book. And then when I feel like I wanna just play around with some things, I'll come to my idea book, get some ideas, create some things. And the ideas that I like, I try to put back in my idea book here to have um, for me to reference later. Um, the other really cool thing about this book is it is five signatures. Um, one, two, three, four, yep, five signatures. But what I did was I actually sewed three of them in and two of them I left as um, in elastics. So there are two signatures in this idea book that I can actually remove. So if there's something I'm doing on the side of a page or I wanna do some sewing or you know there's something else I wanna make sure I can include in my idea book, I can take this whole signature out, do whatever work on that I want to on it and then slip it back in. The other nice thing is that if I fill up one of these signatures and want to replace it, I can very easily um, replace that. And I have two of them that are elastics that I can do that with. So um, I, that's one of the main things that I love about this idea book is that it's very versatile in terms of, you know, how you can uh, put things into it and even take things out and work on them. I think this would be a great idea even just for a regular junk journal. Um, if you're art journaling or something like that, or you're using a lot of mixed media, sometimes it's nice to be able to take a signature out, do your work with, you know, your wet paints and different things like that. And then after it dries, you can put it back in without having to worry about messing up, you know, all the other pages inside your one book. So this is my junk journal idea book, and I'll link that down below and you can take a look at trying one of those. Okay, and that was five projects, but I'm going to give you a little bit of a bonus one. <laughs> um, I have, because like I said, I had so many projects that I had fun with um, this year. And so I thought I'd bring out these two little, um, these gratitude books that I made, and they're just little flip books. I, 
I adore these just because they have so many pockets and flips and things in them. So I'll just kind of go through this one and they're about, I think they're four by four inches. So they're perfect for uh, making a little gift for someone um, or even just keeping for yourself to be able to jot down things that you're grateful for and things like that. So, and I also thought since we are getting to the end of the year, it's always nice to reflect back and think about the things that you were grateful for. So I think one of these books would be perfect just to remember, even though 2020 has been tough, uh, there were probably some things that you could find to be grateful for. And this would be a good book to capture them when you'd like to read back over them and see. So I'm gonna just uh, flip through it here a little bit. It has a pocket right here in the front for a little tag and then there's even a small little space here a small little flip and a pocket in here and then on the side here is another fun little pocket and then there is a top pocket right here so when you flip this over there's a um, also this small little envelope where you can put something it has a little tuck spot and then um, behind the envelope is another pocket. And then in the back is a little corner pocket for you to put a little tag in there as well. So just a cute little book to be able to capture some lists or some notes or things that you're grateful for. And that's it for my assemblage for 2020. I think in all we had 11 projects that I went through for you. And I hope that this gives you some inspiration of some things that you could do if you feel like crafting in the next couple weeks or the last couple days here of the year if you're home. Um, I wanted to say a great big thank you to all of my subscribers. If you're not subscribed, I hope that you will subscribe to my channel because I plan to continue doing this in the new year. But thank you so much to the people who are subscribed. Thank you for liking my videos and commenting on them. Getting to know you has been um, a real pleasure. It's been really fun um, getting to know everybody who stops by my channel all the time. Thank you so much for being here with me. And I will see you all in 2021. Have a great week. We'll see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.